posting and having a lot of people see it can definitely be kind of scary. You know, if you're a teenager, you're gonna make bad decisions sometimes. They can screenshot it, they can do so many things to save that, and they can edit it in ways that you won't want them to. Whether or not you think it'll go away, it's there. Anything you post online, you're stuck with. Oversharing to me is putting too much of your personal life in front of a, a wide audience of people. Posting something for the sake of showing that you're there and maybe not because you're actually having that great of a time. Posting about things that people don't necessarily think are significant, but they're just kind of posting to be posting. What you share and how often you share is gonna affect the way that somebody views you. Just because I'm gonna post all the time, and that doesn't mean that you're gonna get all the attention. That doesn't mean that everybody's gonna like you. For example, people have like Finstas where they, or spam accounts where they just like post random stuff and sometimes they get too personal with what, uh, with what they're talking about on there. Things that are meant to be texted one-to-one, -one, people tend to post online so 50 other people can see their plans for tomorrow or the next weekend. You could be doing something like that could potentially endanger yourself by making your account public and saying too much about where you live or who you are. When I'm in like a cool location and I want to show everybody where I am, but most of the time I'll just tag where I am on like a Snapchat story so people can know. So once you put something online, it can be there forever because people might take screenshots, they might record it, they might save it. I don't think I don't think people don't realize that it's gonna be there forever. I think they just don't care. A lot of people have this mentality of like, what I'm doing is very insignificant. Why is anyone gonna care about this? You should be cautious of what you post. Don't post your pictures and think like, okay, nobody, nobody's seeing me, nobody's screenshotting me, nobody doing nothing, because people doing that, you just not gonna know. Uh, your Snapchats, despite the fact that they only last, I don't know, four to eight seconds, they're still there. Your Instagram stories that go away after 24 hours, they're still there. Anything that is posted, anything that's up, no matter what happens, even if you leave it up for a minute and take it down, it's there as, as soon as you put it up there. No one's going to scrutinize everything that you say the same way that you might. You are not obliged to post every second of your life in order to please um, what you might seem as the majority of people. So when you feel like you have to post all the time, when you feel like you have to do this in order to get fame and attention, you don't. It's not your job. That's something you always have to be thinking about. Um, what do you want people to remember you on social media as? You just saw a really interesting video with some uh, teen or young person voices talking to you about a, a digital footprint, some of the implications that your digital footprint can have on you. Um, keep those things in mind. We're going to continue now working on your portfolio, slide number seven called Digital Footprint. We're going to talk right now about the appearance of the slide. What we've been doing is we've been putting three categories and then places or times where you leave your digital footprint. What are the things that you do when you use a cell phone? What are the things that you do when you're at home? What are the things that you do when you're at school? There can be some repeats on there. Maybe you check email in more than one place. Uh, maybe you actually um, use Google Classroom at home. So Google Classroom or an item like that could show up in more than one category, and that's fine if that happens for you. Now, onto the appearance of this slide. The first thing I want to talk about is the fact that Digital footprints do not go away. And if we think of some footprints that do go away, I want you to think of the beach here at, in uh, Norton Shores in Muskegon. We have miles of wonderful Lake Michigan beachfront. And every single footprint that you've ever left at the beach does go away. So we're going to give this slide sort of a beachy look. When I'm saying that, I'm thinking of white clouds. I'm thinking of blue water and blue sky. And I'm thinking of sort of a light colored brown for the sand that you might see at the beach. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and clear out inside my title box here so that it doesn't have a fill color. I'm just going to go ahead and make it transparent. 
And now for the slide, I'm going to change the background to a custom gradient. We've done a custom gradient before. And I'm thinking three colors for this custom gradient. I'm thinking the sky blue color, the sand color, and maybe there's a few clouds floating around also, so a white color along the way too. So I'm gonna set those three colors. Uh, the first stop is already there. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make that one the white. I'm gonna add one gradient stop. I think I'll make that a light blue. And for the third one, uh, the sand, you can experiment if you're doing the same as me with any of these. I think I'll go with, it's called light orange one, but good enough. Could be a sunset also. Once again, feel free to set whatever type. You can have linear or radial. You can have any of these. And I don't think uh, for the centered, I don't think I showed you guys that. If you click on this slider here, you can adjust what it might look like also. I'll leave mine right about there. When I click OK, that slide looks pretty cool. We got a nice background. You'll be setting a gradient custom background for Digital Footprint. Now that we have a really nice looking background, we're going to go ahead and add your name onto this. We're going to do it a little bit different than what we've done in the past. You might be familiar with something called Word Art. Today, you'll go to Insert. We'll have you choose Word Art. It's about halfway down the menu. You will type in your first and last name. When you press enter, that word art will show up. I'd like you to look at the amount of space that you have on your slide that's remaining. And your word art should take up just about one fourth of that space. I'm going to adjust the size of my word art a little bit so it looks about like what you see on the screen right now. Word art's kind of nice because you can change colors when you put your word art in. When you insert your word art, you can look at the fill color. And I'm um, going to allow you guys to make this be whatever color you want. You can also change the line or border thickness, uh, color and thickness. Now, if you do too thick of a border, it kind of washes out your word art. But if you like the way that looks, that would be fine. I'm going to go ahead and set it for a little bit less um, border thickness so it looks like that. You'll use word art to put in your first and last name in this quarter of the space of the slide that's left. Now we're also going to add something on here called a call out. When you guys were looking at some drawing tools earlier in the trimester, you may have noticed that under the shapes area, there's a call out. Now I'm specifically directing you to one of four call outs. There's a rectangular, rounded rectangular, oval, and cloud. I imagine a lot of you guys are going to use the cloud one. I'll go ahead and click on the cloud. And what you're going to do is you're going to draw in uh, this area here. And I'm going to go ahead and just draw one in. And I'm going to sort of resize it. You'll be able to see the handles. You're going to fill in um, this fourth of it with this cloud, or excuse me, with this call out. And you can set where it comes from. You can click on that little box. It's going to be coming from your first and last name. And again, this also you can change the fill color. Um, it's just going with the most recent that I've done. I'm going to leave it you know, kind of like that. And if I double click inside the call out, you'll notice there's an insertion point. Before I type anything, I'm going to go ahead and center and middle the insertion point. And I'm going to put in the first category name for this, which is cell phone. Kind of small right now. I'll adjust that in a moment. And under cell phone, I'm going to put the digital footprints that I listed for cell phones. So for myself, I listed phone calls, texting, a couple apps that I use, Robinhood. and Twitter. Now once you have that in, you can go ahead and experiment a little bit with the size of the text. You can change some things to bold. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and increase it until it doesn't fit. 
they'll go 17 or 18. I'm going to turn bold on so it really stands out. Uh, the word cell phone, I'm going to see if it'll un allow me to underline cell phone, and it does. And there's the first call out. In a moment, you'll see me create the other call outs. I'm probably going to use the duplicate method, and then I'll have all three call outs for all three categories. At this time, slide number seven, digital footprint, should be looking similar to this. We'll be turning this one in for a 25-point grade eventually, not today. You don't have to turn it in today. I will let you know when it's going to be turned in. If it's not finished, treat it as homework and get this slide so it's finished, looking similar to this. Next up, we're going to head to typing.com, finish the hour with some typing. We're going to be working today on a new lesson in the beginner section called O, B, and A. These keys are pretty important keys. I do see kids make a mistake with the letter B quite frequently. Typing.com is going to show your left pointer finger. Make sure you use your left pointer finger for the letter B. Uh, the other ones I think you'll be just fine with. Now there's quite a few screens or tabs on this one. Uh, I haven't counted them. I was able to do it in three minutes. I'm probably maybe a little bit faster than you, but this is a finishable lesson. If you don't finish it today, no worries. We'll work on it some more tomorrow. If you do finish it, feel free to get your screenshot, bring it on over here to the typing.com slide, and that's going to wrap up uh, what we'd have you do today. Remember, there is a wrapping up section um, at Schoology that you can see. Make sure you go through that checklist each day if there's time left in the hour. All right, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Have a great day, everybody.